Hey there guys, this is Flamzeron, aka YouTube's Tosuke, and with Saint Seiya Omega being over finally after like three or so years or whatever, I figured I should uh, do a little review on it, kind of like what I would do with like manga and whatnot, and I'll probably do the same with the original Saint Seiya manga, but I figured I should do, give you guys my thoughts on, uh, <clears throat> on the entire series. Because I've watched the entire thing at this point. I'm going to start from the very beginning and I'll just kind of go through things I like, things I didn't like, you know, all that good junk. And so I guess we'll just start off with Season 1 of Saint Seiya Omega. Um, it kind of starts off interesting. At first, you know, there's not really too much going on. It's more about Koga, you know, going through the, uh, the uh, Saint Academy, the Palaistra or whatever it's called. And there he meets Soma and Yuma and all his other... Yun Yuma, Yuna, um, and all his other buddies. And, of course, Seiya shows up for a little bit early on. and It's kind of cool to see Toru Furia come back as uh, Seiya, even if it's a different kind of Seiya. He's, he, feel, he fills the Iolia role, I think, more than, <clears throat> more than he used to. Which is kind of funny, because... Koga is not really like Seiya. He's not really that really hot-headed, reckless, passionate youth. He's I feel like Koga's a little more level-headed and he he's definitely got a similar mindset and thought process as Seiya, but uh I feel like Koga is he's more level-headed. He he's just more I think down to earth than Seiya, which I kind of like because not for the more logical and uh, quote unquote smart, I'll say, um, sort of mindset, but just the fact that he's different than say, and he's not really like your average protagonist. In fact, when I first saw him, I thought he was a girl, and I was a little skeptical when I learned that Hikaru Midorikawa. And for those of you who couldn't understand my Japanese, Hikaru Midorikawa, I, I was a little skeptical when I heard that he was going to play uh, Koga, but then when I actually heard it, I'm just like, well, he actually did a pretty good job because I'm so used to hearing him as like you know, Leon, and, you know, Android 16, and, you know, TN, because I just watched Kai, where he replaces uh, the old voice actor for TN, who happened to also be the voice actor for Shiryu, who's now been replaced with uh, uh, Takira Sakurai and Ken Rada, who I'll get to later on, as far as the voice acting from of the original Saints goes. <clears throat> I kind of like how the uh, new Bronze Saints, they kind of fi fill the archetypes of the originals a little bit, while also kind of putting a f fresh face on some of these. Like, you know, Koga, you would always obviously put at the, se at the Seiya. Soma, I'd say, is more like Jabu than anyone else, which makes him kind of the odd one out, if you ask me. But And, of course, Ryuho is very much like Shun, which is also kind of ironic because he's the son of Shiryu. Uh, Yuna, I think, is more like Hyoga. She's sort of like the the big sister or the quote-unquote mommy of the group who kind of has to keep everybody in line. Haruto is uh, probably more like Shiryu than anyone else. <clears throat> he, just in terms of like his overall style, or either that or he's, eh, th there's a bit of a mix, I think. And of course, Eden is a lot like Iki, though I feel like he's more of a, He's a more lone wolf kind of type, which is kind of funny when Iki finally shows up. But anyway, and then it goes into, you know, the whole Mars section of the story. And of course, we already know that uh, Mars is the bad guy, at least for the time, because we see him in the first episode where he and Say a duke it out. And uh, beforehand, you know, Arya, who. You know, the, to me, it almost seemed like they were sort of setting her up as the replacement Athena. But, in, in I still wasn't entirely keen on where she fit in the story. And there were a lot of questions going on, like, you know, what happened to the uh, the original Bronze Saints? You know, where's Iki? Where's Hyoga? Where's Shun? Of course, we get to see Shun, who's played by Hiroshi Kamiya, who you'll probably recognize as Levi from Attack on Titan, so... One of his more, uh, I feel like he does Shun very well because he 
he has sort of like that to us it'd be sort of feminine I guess but I feel like in Japanese culture it's more of a boyish kind of thing he's got sort of like that like he uses boku a lot when addressing himself as opposed to ore which is a lot of what a lot of young guys use <clears throat> now uh, he does a good job because he kind of brings a little bit more of that Ryo Horikawa into it because I remember the guy who was Shun in the Hades of Yays had like this very meek sounding voice whereas Hiroshi Kamiya does a pretty good job of uh, making Shun sound older and also sound more like the original and of course what I'm getting at early on later on is that you know Arya gets killed so she's not really Athena and this whole war with the uh it was already sort of like a war against the Palestra or Palestri or however you pronounce it. So the Bronze Saints were already having to fight like Silver Saints and whatnot. And probably other bronze. Like even Hydra Ichi has to step in where Messiah Onasaka returns from the uh OVAs or I don't know if he's from the original or not. I'd have to go back and listen. I don't think he is. <clears throat> I'm trying to tone down the uh the uh, throat clearing, but anywho, um, so they have to fight a lot of the Silver Saints, and they're already kind of bringing down their uh, bringing down their numbers. Though I feel like they're trying to make a point not to kill the Saints because I mean, they're they're fighting their friends essentially, so they don't really want to kill them unless they absolutely have to. And as far as we know, it's left up to the viewer to think that after everything is done and over with the bronze saints and the silver saints that were beaten you know come back to life but anyway moving on to the second part of the uh of the season season one i'm going to call this season one part two um this is where things start to get a little more complicated yet also kind of going back a little bit because they go back to the sanctuary arc and that it's essentially a repeat of the sanctuary arc. The bronze saints are going through and and you know having to fight all the gold saints and of course if, if you've watched the original you know that some of them are good and some of them are bad. All the bad ones get killed with the exception of like one which I'll get to later on. And uh, so they go through and you know it's usual stuff. The big twist is that they don't really fight. They do fight a gold saint, but it's really more of like they're fighting more than one person as opposed to uh as opposed to the original where they're really only fighting Gemini Saga. It's interesting because uh they kind of put a little bit of a spin on it where Mars is being control was uh under the influence of his wife. Or this new woman who becomes his wife. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, from what I remember, it's been a while since I've seen the first season. My memory is primarily on the second season. But... And so that that's where it gets a little more complex. And, you know, they beat Mars, who ends up not being a bad guy. And, of course, they kind of end up taking out that entire family. I mean, Eden, at this point, he shifted. He started off kind of bad... And he's sort of like that, you know, arrogant, pompous, I'm better than you kind of person. And I remember them saying he was a silver saint, and, and the rest of the series they keep saying he's bronze, and I don't really like that. I kind of like the fact that, you know, there's a, there's a, there would be a silver saint with, like, the main characters of bronze, because then, you know, from the viewer's standpoint, and also from the standpoint of the characters, you know, when they're struggling against a big bad guy, you know since Eden's a silver saint, you would think he'd be more powerful than the bronze saints, and they could use that to their advantage, they being the writers and the creators of the, of the series. They could be like, oh, you think Eden is more powerful just because he's a silver saint? Wrong. He can get beaten, too. I feel like they... I mean, obviously, they show Eden get beaten up a lot, you know, which I feel like loses its effect if he's just a bronze saint, which is, I think, the case, and that's unfortunate. And he also gets a hair change color, which... I don't really mind, but 
the I didn't really like it because his cloth, his first cloth, kind of blended in with his hair, and I didn't really like how they made it look. And of course, they fix it later on, but you know. So they're taking on one of the other, the Pisces Gold Saint Amor, who also happens to be the brother of Idonia. I think her name is. I can't remember her name. Uh, the uh, quote-unquote wife of Mars. And so they're kind of fighting... <clears throat> fighting uh, them. And of course, uh, the four kings... quote Or not four kings. Uh, um, this series has a bit of a... Uses a bit of a... It's one of those series where it's got like a little bit of lore kind of in between the original and this one. The Bronze Saints, the the original being Saiyan and whatnot, they fight Mars and his group, and Mars kind of beats them up and if, infects them with like this dark Cosmo that um, makes it hard for them to use their Cosmo, which is why a lot of the uh, which is why a lot of the Bron- the original kind of are off doing their own thing. Like when you first see Shun, he doesn't use his cloth, and when you see Hyoga, he also doesn't use his cloth. Who, by the way, Hyoga is uh, performed by a uh, Mamoru Miyano, who I. Th- you might recognize his light from Death Note and Flynn from Vesperia. So I found it kind of... I actually like the way he did his role. <clears throat> and I like how they made his Cosmo look like just a giant... Like a giant galaxy. Which is a something I'll address later on. Which is, you know, power control. But, uh... Anywho. Um, so they're all fighting and... You know, once they... Def- they're able to defeat um, all of them, except for except. Then it turns out that what they were what uh, what uh, Mars's wife was trying to do. Media, Media was her name. Media. I totally didn't look that up on Wikipedia just now. No, I actually did. Uh, she summons these four kings, or they come up later on. So the new saints are having to fight the quote-unquote old enemies. I know it's not technically old because it's it's lore from the series. They do show like little snippets of it, and we at least get to see it, but anyway. And Media is actually Mars's uh, second wife. Uh, his first wife was killed in a terrorist attack. Thanks, Wikipedia. <clears throat> but, uh, anywho, so... It, and, of course... During this point, they learn everyone learns that Koga's Cosmo is actually dark. That's one another thing they've introduced into the series: uh, Cosmo having elements, or Clots having elements, and of course, Soma being fire. At the same time, though, it's not really that new. And I think in the second season, they kind of change it up a little bit. This one, I feel like, is where it tries to be kind of different. And they with Yuna being a female, if you look at her and you. You think of Saint Seiya's like, wait a minute, why isn't she wearing a mask? They kind of make a point that, you know, she doesn't want to hide her mask. She doesn't want to be shackled by the the old rules of, uh, the old rules of, uh, you know, the saints. Which, you know, for those of you who don't know, if you have, when, you, if you're a female saint, you have to wear a mask. And if a guy sees your mask, uh, you either have to kill them or you have to love them. But, uh, Anywho, um, and then later on we learn that the whole reason why Koga's Cosmo is dark, because several times he shows that his his Cosmo is light, and he even changes the way he, because, you know, when in Saint Seiya, you know, your own is like, burn my Cosmo, but of course he says, shine my Cosmo, which sounds really cool, because he says, kagayake, ore no Cosmo, and that's, it's kind of cool. I kind of like how they vary up, you know, the characters and how they say burn my cosmo of course soma being fire says burn my cosmo anyway but so it, then it turns out that koga actually had a demon inside him a, a god inside him, like this evil god named abzu and uh, it turns out that Seiya was sort of trying to work with that he was kind of hiding a little bit but he comes back to help and you know, in the big climactic battle between Koga and Abzu, uh, Koga has to use the Sagittarius cloth, which is already broken up anyway. And 
because his cloth has been destroyed after he's been beating up everyone and, you know, fighting with Seiya when he was possessed with by Abzu. Which, I kind of didn't really like that they gave him the Sagittarius. I mean, I understand why they did. Because, you know, he can't really... F- with Saint Seiya, it's very, very, very dangerous for a saint to fight without a cloth because their attacks are just, like, super powerful on, like, a planetary level. You know, it... You know, it's almost like kind of Dragon Ball Z, except without the high endurance. In fact, with the original, they make a huge point of Shiryu being so beaten and losing so much blood that he probably shouldn't fight anymore. But anyway. But I didn't really like it because it was giving me the impression that Koga was going to become the Sagittarius Saint after Seiya, which I didn't like because I don't want him... Because he's so different than Seiya, I don't want him to become the Seiya of the series. I want him to be something different. I want him to be unique. So I didn't really like it that much that they did that. I understand why they did that, but you know, it's more of like and I don't I mean it's like I think they should have done something different. I mean, there's only so much you can do with the given story. <clears throat> of course, Koga beats him. Beats Abzu, so that gives him the status of God Killer, and that's where the first season ends. 